With Derrick Henry, I mean, he's he seems to just be building on the season that he had last year. What I mean, what has he improved on this year? I mean, watching him, it looked like he's improved in his pass protection, uh, obviously his hands, you know, catching the ball. Uh, what are you seeing that he's improved in maybe most this season? I think you hit hit on uh, two two of the biggest things is uh, he's worked extremely hard to uh, improve his pass protection uh, in the in the play pass game and even in drop back when he's in there uh, and then. Uh, obviously, he's he's uh, work, been working diligently on catching the ball and uh, trying to improve uh, in that area and help us help the team in that way. And if I can follow up, we all know about how hard he works during the off season and even during the season on his conditioning. But uh, is there something unique about him that helps him just appear to get stronger as the season gets deeper into the into the season? I mean, you know, coming into December, he's put up quite the numbers the last two Decembers, and uh, you know, he he you know, I know we weren't in December on Sunday, but it seems like he's gotten an early start. Well, you know, obviously he's he's tremendously blessed. You know, he has some some God given abilities, uh, and then obviously his size helps him. Uh, and then he, like you said, he does work extremely hard in the off season, uh, taking care of his body. And then during the season, uh, he gets in, you know, in the weight room here with uh, Frank, and he works his tail off when he's in there. Uh, and then, you know, I'm looking at him. It looks like he eats pretty good. I don't, you know, I don't see a whole lot of fat on him, so I don't know that he's eating fast food two or three nights a week. It looks like he takes care of his body, eats well. Uh, I know he drinks a ton of water. Uh, so, you know, I think all those things building through the off season uh, and continuing to build, not just maintain during the season, uh, has obviously helped him and been beneficial for him. Thank you. Ryan? Hey, Tony. Uh, early in the hey. Colts game, uh, when Derek got the ball, I think he was stopped on a two-yard run, and the defensive lineman sort of pushed off on his helmet when he was getting up and then even kind of kicked him in the helmet. Did you notice that? And to follow that question, do, does Derek – it seemed like that made Derek mad. Does he run angry all the time, or does – did that fire him up? Uh, Derek stays pretty even keel, you know, uh, when things are going – the way he wants him to go, he's, he's, he's kind of steady. And then when, when things are tough, he kind of stays the course, he stays even kill. So, um, and then when he does get kicked off, um, you know, I, he doesn't say anything, you know, Derek is really everything he does. He leads by example, in my opinion, you know, he, he tries to lead. He, he's not very vocal, um, as you know, so, you know, did I see that? No, I didn't. Uh, but, you know, like I said, Derek stays even kill and, and I think he every time he touches the ball, pass protects, he's trying to be the best that he can be to help the team. If no one else has questions, I can go ahead and ask, but Brian, if you have a follow, that works. T D. What's up, Coach? What's up, T D? How you doing? I'm chilling, man. Uh, I wanted to ask you about how you guys do the rotation at, at running back. Is that something that's a joint effort, or, or do you manage the reps? How does that work? It's a joint effort. You know, throughout the course of the week, um, Art and I collaborate uh, on, you know, different uh, situations within the game, um, specific plays that, you know, he may want or I may want to run with certain guys. Um, and we just, you know, we communicate that way during the game. And, and then uh, also, uh, if we feel like Derek's getting tired or Derek tells us he's tired, then we'll get him out and, and get someone else in. And, you know, obviously, as the season goes, it, uh, hopefully we can continue to get some other guys rotating in and getting these guys rolling through so that we can have fresh bodies. I would imagine Derek doesn't really tell you he wants to come out too often. So how does that process work? I continually uh, look at him and ask him and, you know, see if he's tapping his head or if he goes to put his hands on his hips, then say, okay, you got to come out or, uh, and then we can kind of uh, finagle a little bit. Art does a great job with personnel groups. So uh -huh. he, we get an idea of when he's tired and, and, and Art will 
call a personnel group that takes him out so he doesn't have a choice. <laughs> you, you look at what he, he's on pace for, I think it's like 376 carries. So when you consider some of the guys in the past and how they had a drop off, um, like I, I, I asked Coach Rabel about uh, Larry Johnson and he said he, he doesn't remember him, but uh, I'm sure you do. He had 410 carries and then the next year it just was like a big drop off. Same thing for Alexander, uh, Sean Alexander, Jamal Anderson, a bunch of guys. So how do you manage you know, having such a tremendous asset, but trying to keep it from being used up. Well, obviously we, we don't want him or I don't want, he may say differently, but I know myself and, and our staff don't want him to have 376 carries. Um, yeah. So we, we, we just have to, I got to do a better job of making sure I got these other guys ready to roll and ready to go. Uh, and then when they get opportunities, they have to go take advantage of them. Uh, and, and again, show us and show the team that they're capable of ha handling that. Uh, so um, we just we, we'll keep growing. We'll keep building and, and finding ways to get some of these other guys involved in the game as well. Uh, and then that way we can take some of that load off of Derek. Is there anything unique about Derek that will make you think that he even though you don't want him to do it, but make you think that he can withstand that if he if that's just the way that the game plan has to go to win? Well, I think if anything, um, just in, in my time with him and then, you know, his history through college and, and uh, you know, even back through high school, he's been a, a high volume uh, carry guy, you know, yeah. there at Alabama and, and then, you know, these last couple of years here. So if anything, it's just history tells us that he's been able to handle it, you know. Uh, now, do we want it to go that way? Uh, not if we can help it. I think that was part of um, – you know, the reason we, we, we drafted a back um, and, and brought so many guys in that, that we can split some of these reps. But when it comes down to winning a game, I think we all uh, understand that we want to win. And him being on the field gives us certainly uh, a really good chance of accomplishing that. So, you know, when the game's on the line or, or when, when the game's in a situation where we need him to go, uh, certainly I think he's built to do it and handle it. And we all trust and believe that he'll get it done. I'm not sure if you had any crossover film with, with, with the Browns and, and watching Nick Chubb, but I remember you had said that there were certain guys that you will show clips to, to your running backs. Is Chubb one of them? And if so, what, what, what stands out about him as a running back and what you've seen? Uh, absolutely. He's one, um, you know, he's, you know, he's explosive. Uh, he does a good, he, you know, they, they run the outside zone scheme. He does, he does a great job with his tracks, his vision, uh, and the things that you can learn from now, some of the stuff that he has naturally, you know, speed and stuff like that. Obviously, I mean, you can show it, but that, that's not going to affect the guys, but you know, his ball security, the way he reads things, uh, his decisiveness and the way he makes decisions with his vision. Uh, and things like that, you can show those things, you know, his pad level when he's running through tackles and things like that. So you can show those things. And uh, if there's a little nugget we can take from it, it's worthwhile. For sure. Appreciate you. Yep. I have a few for you, Coach, before we let you go. Um, can you just talk about the Browns run defense? They're anticipating getting Miles Garrett back. So just kind of what challenges those present? Well, obviously, uh, Miles Garrett is an excellent football player, but as you look across their defense, um, they're physical. They, they penetrate. Uh, you can see that they're well coached. Um, they do some really good things from a schematic standpoint. Uh, and up front, from what I've watched uh, just the last couple of days, you know, Okunjobi is very disruptive. Uh, Vernon's disruptive. Miles Garrett, obviously, is disruptive. Um, the linebackers are physical. Uh, Goodson comes downhill. Uh, Wilson, I believe it's Wilson, 51, I'm sure Derek knows him, you know, from playing from uh, Alabama. He's, you know, when he's in there, he's heavy and, and he'll thump you. And then, you know, Carl Joseph and Sendejo, Sin, I'm going to mess his name up, uh, Sendejo, I believe, 23. Um, both those safeties um, will absolutely uh, hit you. Uh, I, I remember Carl Joseph from uh, recruiting him back at, at, at uh, 
high school when he was in high school. And so obviously he's had some injuries, but he's always been a physical player that runs around. Uh, so they, they do a great job, you know, and they, they, uh, they play hard. So we'll have a great challenge ahead of us. And then on our side, um, Jerry McNichols, um, can you just talk about his blocking abilities and kind of what he did specifically last week? Jeremy's, uh, Jeremy's done a great job of taking advantage of, of the opportunities that he, that he's had both in, uh, in his role as a third down uh, guy and then uh, we had opportunities to run the ball. Uh, so he, J Jeremy's a very smart guy. Uh, he understands defenses. Uh, he does a great job studying, uh, other teams and their pressures and things that they present. And, and he is able to carry that over into the game. And, uh, obviously he's a, he's a strong guy. He's not afraid to put his, uh, hands on you and be physical in protection. And so, uh, he, he's done a really good job for us and been a solid contributor. Uh, and then, you know, he's made some, some good runs uh, thus, thus far this year. He's got some uh, first downs, uh, converting some first downs on third down as a runner. So uh, I've been really pleased with Jeremy, and I know he's uh, anxious to continue to get better. One last one for me. Um, obviously, there's been a lot of changes along the offensive line. Can you just talk about the job that they've done opening things up for the running backs and um, kind of what you're expecting from them going into next week? Well, one of the things that uh, Art and uh, Keith, the old line coach Keith Carter, talks a lot about uh, for all of us, and, it, and it's a thing collectively offensively, is it takes all 11. So, um, you know, those guys up front of Keith has done an excellent job. Todd has done an excellent job with in terms of the old line and the tight ends. And they just go out and they just grind and they work their tails off every day in practice. And then it carries over and shows in a game. Uh, but also we all, but having coach receivers before, one of the other things that shows up when you have long runs is usually because the receivers are downfield blocking and, and, uh, handling their, their guys and their blocking assignments too. So it's been, it's been awesome for me to watch. And then I know obviously Derek is very, very appreciative of the job that those guys do as coaches, uh, coaching the individual guys. And then I know he's, uh, excited about the way that the O-line tight ends and receivers as players go out and do their job and allows him to do his job, makes his job a little bit easier. Buck, if you want to jump in. Uh, I'm sorry, Coach, if if, uh, if you've already had questions like this, I'm coming in a little late. But just in oh, terms no of what you're seeing <clears throat> from the guys behind Derek right now as you kind of get into this later part of the season, how much how much are they able to contribute or is, is it just you know uh, is it just about doing whatever you guys can at this point to make sure that you win the game regardless of how the carries are allotted you know i think obviously the first first and foremost is winning right i mean that's that's how we that that allows me to be here talking to you right <laughs> so uh so we're going to do whatever it takes to win the game uh in terms of that, but you know, these guys are working every, the guys behind Derek are working every day in practice, uh, working extremely hard. So that when they get opportunities, they can take advantage of it, uh, take advantage of them. And so I think that they've been doing that. Uh, and you know, sometimes it just, it's the way the game's going. It's the Florida game. Uh, and, and I, I'm just looking, we're all looking forward to these guys as they get opportunities to take advantage of them and, uh, we'll see where it goes. 